Right, so British journalism is amongst the most distrusted and despised globally. And Julia Hartley Brewer, or Haiti Spewer, might be more accurate, has possibly given the worst interview, bar none, that I've ever witnessed. Not only did she incessantly interrupt her guest, a Palestinian MP, but she indulged in petty racism and anti-Arab tropes whilst she was at it. All Arabs and Muslims hate women, apparently, so says a mainstream supposed journalist, or at least that's the inference from what she said. The level of disrespect shown was shocking. The fact she wouldn't even let him explain some of the most fundamental and basic issues because she wanted to spout off over the top of him. She literally made Fox News look professional, which isn't saying a lot given this interview took place on the British media TV equivalent, both stations having the same billionaire business daddy. Right now, Palestinians are being slaughtered in their tens of thousands, and Hartley Dudar's guest is, apart from being a Palestinian MP, is also an eminent physician who has devoted his life to public health and his community. He deserved a professional interview, professional courtesy to make his very credible points. That isn't talk TV, though, and I hope the whole world learns to realise that. And if you haven't seen it yet, well, stay tuned. Right, so when I started this channel, I did so coming from a position of already despising our mainstream media immensely with their total lack of impartiality, their amateurism, their failure to check their facts, their overwhelmingly right-wing bias across much of the print media, and with the TV media seemingly saying how high each and every time the government of the day say jump. Well, this was especially the case of the BBC, as I often criticise them, but worse even than them was the rise, or has been the rise, of tabloid TV, essentially. News channels little better than much of the nonsense being spread in print. And of course, like so many of our papers, they tend to be owned and backed by billionaire press barons. So why should any of us familiar with that be surprised the TV news they tell us it should be any better? If you shun the Murdoch son, for example, why would you watch his TV news channel Talk TV? Especially when he employs the likes of Julia Hartley Brewer as a so-called journalist, to conduct interviews as absolutely ridiculous, insulting and shameless as the one she's just conducted. It's not just Murdoch that platforms this dreadful woman either. She's permanently on shows guesting as some kind of a pundit like Question Time on the BBC, for example, when she serves a role not to inform, but to dumb people down in effect. The anti-wokeism, as the media kept us for so long before social media gained as much prominence as it has and got us asking far more questions of it. Where else can we now hold her to account when the system supposedly in place to deal with incidents like this are incapable of doing so, or seemingly are incapable of doing so? This interview cannot be allowed to stand without having consequences. It is that bad. But judge for yourself before I get into it. You say you don't approve and of... And do you think that Israel is a democratic country? I Netanyahu know that Israel is a democracy. democracy. They have elections. No, this man is now uh, has three, four courts against him because yes. of four cases of I know. corruption. This man knows okay. if the war we have, stops, we haven't got go time to do the entire history and of Benjamin Netanyahu, the, who is not a is popular not figure in Israel. This I, is this. Is, well, I'm, I'm not here to defend Benjamin Netanyahu. Mustafa, is it whenever, possible to? Whenever I speak, right? Whenever I speak about Palestinian rights or no. Palestinian situation, you, you claim it is history. I'm talking about what's happening today. No, I know, and this I'm is trying not history. Can we, can we just, you, you, <laughs> so, you talked about how you don't want Israel, Israel, you're saying Israel, that October the 7th happened, you're placing that in historical context. I understand that. Please don't say that again. We don't have time for it. You've made that point five times already. I don't okay. know what you have time oh for. Oh my let God, me for, for the love yourself. of God, let me finish a sentence, man. I don't, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know. But I'd like to finish a sentence, sir. Anyway, so... No, you are misleading the public now really? by explaining Right, I've got 20 seconds left. I'm not even going to bother trying and to answer. Um, if you don't think Israel's reaction is acceptable, what would have been an acceptable reaction to you? You've got 10 seconds left. To end occupation and allow peace to prevail for both people. That's their reaction. Brilliant. Yeah. Sorry to have you know, been a woman speaking to you, but there you are, doctor. Throughout all of that, she's pulling faces. She's feigning disinterest and disgust. She treats Dr. Mustafa Barghouti with the utmost disdain and disrespect in her attitude. She's just plain rude. She consistently interrupted him. She didn't want to hear what he had to say or how he wished to present the facts. The plan, it seems, was just to belittle the Palestinian argument 
in light of the assassination of Sally al in Lebanon a few days ago. She didn't want to hear what he had to say about Israel or Netanyahu, despite Netanyahu being behind the atrocities that have killed thousands of his countrymen. He tries to make the point about what is happening in the here and now, not the history of the situation. And all Hartley Brewer can do is laugh and splutter and dismiss the historical context of the events of October 7th as if everything began on that day, which, of course, those of us familiar with somewhat or somewhat familiar with them think of the Nakba in that instance when we think of the history of the situation we think of the six-day war the rise of the OIC the occupation the land grabs the apartheid but according to Hartley Brewer there was no time for any of that why did you bother offering this poor man airtime simple answer based on that was to make a mockery of him and everything he stands for in his defense of Palestinians in light of genocide yet still Hartley Brewer could get worse and did get worse Dr. Barghouti asked what she did have time for, and she tore his head off because, God forbid, she not make this all about her and shout over the top of him. And shout she did, yelling, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know. Well, we know you don't know anything. There was clearly no background, no research, no anything resembling journalism in the remotest terms happening here. If the thing you reach for is racist tropes against Arabs and Muslims, especially. I have to commend Dr. Barghouti on his patience because he simply responds by accusing Hartley Brewer of misleading the public in a very even tone. The truest, most honest statement to come out of the entire mess of an interview. Hartley Brewer works for Rupert Murdoch here, I would remind you though. She finally asked one question though, that if you don't feel Israel's response is acceptable, then what is? And it was a stupid question, I thought. Ceasefire surely is the obvious answer, but that's why I should stick to this and leave the answers to such things to those who can give better responses than I can. As Dr. Barghouti replied, to end occupation and allow peace to prevail for both sides. Perfect answer. Therefore, she hated it. Closing the interview by apologising for being a woman and all that, getting one more racist response in at the very end. Above all else, the racism stands out. Those two comments, sorry for being a woman and all that, and maybe you're not used to women talking. For anyone defending her, I guarantee she would not have made anti-Jewish sentiments towards comments made by an Israeli MP in the same light, would she? So let's close off that argument for a start. It's an anti-Arabic and Islamophobic trope to talk in terms of Muslim men hating women, as she inferred twice. We have talked so much over the use of racist tropes for several years now, and the number of people pulled up for using anti-Semitic ones in that time. We know it just doesn't pass muster. People do not get away with it. It gets condemned in the media in the strongest possible terms. And of course, there's been very much weaponized in that same way towards the likes of Jeremy Corbyn and those who supported him and his vision for the country and the Labour Party in a way to kill that off. Yet here we have a mainstream, I resent using the word journalist, but for clarity's sake, I will, making blatantly Islamophobic comments. I'm reminded again of Stephen Fry's Christmas message that anti-Semitism is regarded as the only acceptable form of racism. Yet this interview proves him completely wrong because Islamophobia is rampant and excused. Of course, it is being excused. Where are Ofcom in all of this? Complaints I know have been made. I'd encourage more to be made, but will they do anything? I won't hold my breath. Hartley Brewer, in pushing these Islamophobic tropes, isn't unique in doing so. It's a familiar refrain across many right-wing outlets in the Western world in order to promote disdain and disgust amongst the populace towards Palestinians. This is a pro-Israel narrative being set in effect by association. We see them do this in other ways as well, of course. The Health Ministry of Gaza is always referred to as the Hamas-run ministry, even though Hamas are the government there. You never get Israel-run put in front of Israel's health ministry, though. Another example is Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, but you never get Western-backed Israel being said in the same light. Over the last three months, there are now so many examples of Western media, and especially here in the UK, of this happening. You lose track in the end, and what has been done about it? Nothing. This latest extremely blatant, on-the-nose example, courtesy of a really awful Rupert Murdoch interviewer, though, has thrust how bad our media are into the spotlight. We need media reform. This channel will always hold the media to account because, as I said earlier, it's why this channel came to exist to begin with. Enough with the lies, enough with the false narratives, and enough of misleading the public. It deserves nothing but contempt, this. Those with the powers purportedly to deal with this deserve contemporary inaction, too. And for as long as mainstream news fail to inform, 
independent media will be there to fill the void and hold them to account when no one else will, ask the questions they won't, and that includes our politicians as well, such as our next likely Prime Minister, Keir Starmer. He won't be reforming the media at all, not if he's going to Rupert Murdoch's parties, as this video here will explain all about. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.